So I've come to think of gardening as a form of space-time medicine. So the space in a garden, which is an enclosed space, creates, creates a sense of safety. And that's crucial for people who've experienced trauma or, or, or are very anxious, for example. Um, that this, this safe setting is it's absolutely necessary. It's the kind of foundation of any horticultural therapy work to establish a place where people can begin to let their guard down, be less vigilant about what's, what, what might, any threats that might be on the horizon, and, and actually then begin to let new experiences in, let their defences down. So in that sense, the safety of the garden, the sense of enclosure within it, is, is actually a therapeutic tool in its own right. At the same time, gardens don't, don't make us feel trapped either. So, so we have the right kind of mixture of, of what, what's become known in um, landscape uh, uh, design of prospect and refuge. But this, this refuge in the garden, it, it is set apart from life. But at the same time, we are part of the cycle of life when we work in the garden. So it's not an escape from life, maybe an escape from everyday life, but it is an escape from life itself. In fact, it puts us in touch with, with you know, the inevitability of death and decay, and also with the forces of renewal and regeneration. And that brings me on to the time side of it. Because, because gardening is intrinsically forward-looking. And that, that, for me, is one of the most important therapeutic aspects of gardening. Because when people are, are very depressed, they can't imagine a future. When they're very anxious, uh, or they've experienced a major trauma, they're suffering from PTSD, uh, the future is full of fear and anxiety. So gardening gives us a very ordinary way are beginning to imagine, imagine a future. It's, it's a sort of future we can actually just, we can picture almost immediately. The moment we sow our seeds, um, uh, we're projecting ourselves two or three months ahead and looking forward.